Hello everybody, my name is Rolak and welcome back to the Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. In the last episode, we made our way up Death Mountain, fighting off the Gorons as they tried to block our way up towards. Fought the Elder, Gor Koron, in a sumo match, beat him, and we have now gained access to the Goron Mines. So, in today's episode, we are not going to be wasting any more time and just heading straight into our next dungeon. Welcome to the Goron Mines, our fire dungeon. Like I said, when we started in the Forest Temple, the Zelda games tend to follow a theme with the whole elemental temple things, for the most part. Alright, first things first, obviously. Fire equals hot, so don't jump into the lava. Um... In the original version, the lava dealt... Or magma, I forget which one it is. I think it's magma. Um, jumping in there will take out two hearts if you are playing the original uh, GameCube and Wii version. But in this version, thankfully, it's just one heart. And this which is a bit too heavy for us, so we'll just press it down with the iron boots. Destroys that vent. You run out through here. Um, alright. Like I said before, it has been a while since I've fully played the game, so my memory of a dungeon might not be 100% accurate, but I'll try to make it as accurate as I can. That over there, I believe it's called a toad polis. A fiery toad polis, to be exact. Right over here, some fire slugs. Yeah, control can be a bit jank after climbing some things. I'm gonna have to. Oh wait, do I? Have... I'm I'm all the way back, aren't I? Okay. Oh wait, no, it didn't. I don't think it did two hearts of damage. It just did a full heart of damage. But now it just deals half, so it's a bit more manageable. All right, I'm gonna cut away. <laughs> all right, back where we were. Properly now. Uh, those things aren't called called toad polys. Actually, hang on. Let me actually try doing that shield bash thing that he said. Oh, so it does work. Okay, cool. That's like the only part where you're ever going to use that, though. So don't bother really going too into detail about it. All right, after, there we go. These things are torch slugs. You might remember them from the fire temple in Ocarina of Time. They're pretty simple. You can finish and blow them any time and any given moment. So they're really easy to take care of. A lot more difficult than what they were in Ocarina of Time. There's ourselves a red rupee there. Alright. I think that's the only reason... No, wait. Over here. I was about to say that's the only reason to come over here. Torch slugs are also kind of annoying as you'll be finding them all over the place in this area. More or less likely hanging off the ceiling and trying to jump on you when you get close to them. So just carefully see where they are. Or tr I think you can knock them down with the Gale and Boomerang. I don't remember. In fact, I probably should have killed the one over here that we're going to run into in a minute. Yep, there he is. Oh, boy. There we go. Alright, we made it over here. Jump on this thing. Put the Iron Boots on once more. And that opens up the gate. Alright, and we've made it through the... Whoa, whoa! Yeah, they can really get the jump on you if you're not careful. Alright, let's head onward and inwards. Some interesting looking cranes that have some interesting looking things that they're holding there. Uh, we will be getting to those in a moment. As for the time being, we got a chest down here, so let's go ahead and take care of these bulbins. I missed because the other guys got in the way. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing that can happen with the uh, finishing blow. If you somehow, whether the enemy moves out of the way or some other thing obstructs your path of actually getting to the enemy, uh, the ending blow will get you stuck in the ground where you will be stuck for quite a bit. It goes up to like maybe three or four seconds of being stuck. 
So make sure that it's a clear shot to the enemy, otherwise it's going to be not a good time. Alright, with our small key in hand, we're able to progress a bit further, so let's head on to these rotating platforms. Which remind me of those platforms in Mario 64, which I'm not fond of in TikTok Clock. Because fuck that level. Alright. Interesting enough, <clears throat> in the original version, they actually made two changes to this dungeon um, in the HD version. Um, in the original version, there was a weird, like, um, I want to say filter, like a haze filter, I want to say, at the bottom of the screen. It was a bit of annoying, but I don't see why they really had to change it. It wasn't really changing all that much. Anyway, right here is the Dongo. You might remember these guys from Ocarina of Time. They pretty much play out the same way as they did before, where you got to hit them in the tail. I don't know if you can kill them via bombs in this game. Because I don't think I've ever actually really, you know, tried it, obviously. But I, I'm not sure if it is possible or not. I'll have to give it a try once. Does this do anything to you? No, it just stuns you. So, like before, you just want to wait for it to do its fire breath attack. And hit in the tail. They're a bit tough, so... Three jumps, jump attacks will do the trick. Yeah, one more little butt guy right here. Or just five basic sword hits will do. I a lot of breakable stuff here. I guess because <clears throat> it's expecting you to fall down a bunch. But knowing me that I'm somewhat decent enough at the game. Do we really have to hold it? We do. We also got to put on the iron boots. Because that, for some reason, I guess because... It gains some traction and stuff, I guess. I don't know. So we can actually pull it properly? Okay, we want to go now. We want to time running across these things with the pillar of flames, because I think some of them actually get in your way. That one over there does, at least. Good thing that's the only one in the entire dungeon, so we don't have to worry about doing that anymore. Alright, and here we're going to be introduced to another mechanic of the iron boots. Uh, if you remember, their main purpose in Ocarina of Time was to traverse around the water temple properly. And that was because they allowed you to sink underwater. Well, the same can be said in Twilight Princess. And it pretty much follows the same base. But the best thing about this version is you can actually use your sword underwater. So you're not completely defenseless while you're underwater. Equipped with only, like, say, your hookshot. Because now, you actually have something to defend yourself with. And we also have this. These are magnetic rocks. And stepping onto it with the iron boots will cause us to stick, allowing us to walk up upside down, on walls, ceilings, whichever way you put it. And here we have found our first of the Goron Elders. Ah, I thought I felt a presence, but what a young, what a surprise to find a young human. Well, it has come to me of you, and if Gorkoran has faith in you, then your heart must be true. I am one of the four Goron Elders. Goramoto is my name. You are a heroic young human. Please, you must lend this tribe your power. We got a key shard. You need all three key shards to return the big key to its original shape. It is one of the key shards that, when merged together, formed a key to where to the room where Darvis is being held. He is our patriarch. The key is split into three pieces. Each of us elders keep a piece. You must hurry to the other elders. So yes, instead of finding a chest, I think this is the dungeon map, instead of finding a chest that contains the big key for this dungeon, uh, you have to find the three Goron Elders to acquire all the key shards. Oh, that's on the chest. I believe this is just another rupee. Yep. Really getting a whole lot of interesting selections here. Uh, is there anything in these uh, jar? Oh, I can't, right, you can't use your sword in these rooms. Which is strange, even though we're in a dungeon. Well, technically, this isn't really a dungeon room, per se. I don't know what you would call this room. Maybe, like, a storeroom or something? Although, there are things that appear to be, like, desks and stuff. So, maybe it's, like, a classroom or something? I don't know. And anyway, what you might have heard, or, uh, creeping about. You find Uku for this dungeon. Phew. Yeah, free at last. Gracious, you're that nice fellow who helped me out the other day. How nice to see you again. Well, now that we found each other again, let's stick together for a bit, hmm? I'll be right with you, so if you want to warp out, just let me know. We've reunited with Uku. 
So, like I said before, Uku is going to be in every dungeon that we come across. So, we found her for this one. And we're now able to get in and out of the dungeon whenever we please. But we obviously aren't going to be doing that because we don't really need to do that. Anyway, like I said before, equipping the iron boots on these magnetic surfaces will allow us to walk onto the walls. And apparently not have gravity affect the Link's ca cap as much. And in fact, if these were really magnetic walls or like minerals, pretty sure the sword shield um, looks like his buckles on his uh, outfit there. Maybe his earrings. Maybe actually also his tunic because it looks like there's like chain links under it. Everything on Link would probably be falling out of his person and just sticking to the walls. But, you know, it's a video game, so you can't have that happen, so we just have the boots stick to the walls. You know, for obvious purposes. Alright, now we're above... Oh, we're actually above the thing that we were pulling. Okay, interesting. All the Dodongo's back. Doesn't seem like they are. Okay, good. I am hearing... Yes, fire slugs. Alright. Step on this. Activates that. And now we are up here. Now then, as to where we need to go, I do know where we need to go, but I think we need to head over this way first, because that contains a little goodie for us. Yeah, the torch slugs aren't really much of a threat in any way whatsoever. So, they're probably one of the more easily useless enemies in the game. Now this, I believe... Yes, yeah, is our first piece of heart of the dungeon. Now we just need to collect the other one, and we'll be well on our way. And the other one is not until much further in the dungeon, as far as I'm aware. Nope. Nope. Okay. Controls are a bit janky when you're running, when you're walking upside down, when you're getting to walking upside down. So, it's a bit jank on that. As for the map... Huh, that's interesting. So, apparently, judging just by the map, the green parts of the map are where we can walk. So, it's going to be quite a while until we can actually, you know get to the spot we need to be, so I think I'm just going to speed up the process, because this might take a while. <laughs> Boy, that took longer than what it looked like. Jesus Christ, that took forever. All right, moving onwards. We're now getting up to the higher spots of this little crane operation area. I suppose the switch being guarded by a bunch of bulbins, so we obviously have to take care of those. Green little nasty goblin things. God, there's a lot of them around this area. Good lord. I think there'd be more diverse enemies here. All right, let's see if they can get out of the way for this one. Yes, okay. As they just stand and watch. Nope, missed that opportunity. But it's no problem. Alright. So we want to go ahead and step onto this one. This will activate, I think, every... Magnet... I also don't get how these work. They're obviously connected to the switches somehow, so I don't know how stepping on a switch activates the magnetism. But, who knows for certain. Uh, this is also the best way to get back to this spot if you're coming in from the entrance again, since it will be uh, doing a pattern, which will make it easy to get back up to here. Let's drop out of here. Got a few more of these guys to take care of. Oh, apparently the same can be done for the Boko Blends, where you just doing a basic sword combo deals more damage than apparently two jump attacks. I don't know, the, the, the damage system in this game is a bit wonky at times. And you can see, like, the gravity only affects Link's hat when he's upside down, not when he's, you know, sideways. Come here. There we go. But yeah, the whole um, damage output of the sword is a bit of a strange one. I'm not too sure how exactly it works, but I guess because it's such a powerful blow, the jump attack and spin attack will always knock back enemies onto their backs, but I just think it's strange that it does it. Anyway, these might seem like familiar enemies. These are Tektites. 
Red tech ties to be exact. Is, is there any difference in between the blue and red ones? I don't believe so. I don't remember there being any proper difference. In fact, I don't think there's really any difference. I don't think was there any real difference in the Ocarina of Time? I don't think there was. Maybe a, maybe damage output, but I can't really remember. I believe this is a small key. Yes, it was either going to be a small key or a stamp. One or the other. Yeah, let's swim back up over here. Nope, come on, move it. All right, some underwater business we're gonna have to take care of. Yeah, I love the armor; it's just being an item now, not some stupid equipment thing they have to go in and out of the menu for every two seconds. You think they would have worked a thing around that in the original game? I mean, they probably had like all the resources they had at the moment, but eh, whatever. All right. Got another magnet ceiling for us with the controls being all janky. The thing is, when you when you walk up, like say you're walking to be upside down. Also, I just realized Link's hat's not. Oh well. Uh, if you're beginning to walk upside down onto the magnetic surfaces, the control scheme will, unless you let go of the stick at some point, the control scheme will still think you're holding it in the same direction. And it'll still act as though you're holding it... Say you're upside down and you're holding up to go forward. If you're holding up to begin walking upwards... This is sounding weird and stupid, honestly. If you're holding up to go upside down, the game will still think you're holding up while you're trying to go backwards while holding up. So the control scheme can be a, a bit jank. That sentence made no sense. I am well aware of how that happened. Anyway, hit the switch. We finally opened up that gate. The cutscene would not take so long, so the timer will be over. Alright, we got a couple new enemies here. If we take care of this Bulbin. These big spinning obelisk things are beamos. Like in previous games, they'll spit, shoot fire beams at us, and they're pretty much indestructible at the time being. No bombs or specific other tools to really do anything against. We're kind of just hanging out with them. Um, oh yeah, that switch opens up the gate again. Go ahead and walk up this. I think we're just heading... Uh, are we heading to the right or left? Cause I don't... Camera also doesn't work while you're on these things. It does work when you're like that, though. And it's obviously sideways, so it's going to be a bit confusing. Oh, there's a chest over there. Well, let's go grab that, obviously. What is this chest? I don't remember it being a big chest. Oh, maybe it's a stamp. I have a feeling this might be a stamp, because why, why else would there be a big chest here? Oh, What? At what? That's where the piece of heart is? Huh. Really? Really. I mean, the last one I get because it's kind of in a out of place area, but that one, that's that one's just That one's just there. Huh. All right, so we got the second piece of heart very very easily. I didn't expect that to why is it there? Like, just simply turning the camera around can obviously see where the chest is, so I don't know why it's... whatever. Go ahead and chop at these ropes, now I'll bring the thing down. And we do have a small key, right? We picked up one back in the water, yes? Yes, okay, good. Let's go ahead and jump down and open up this door. Now, where are we? Oh, we're in this big area. Okay. The game really likes to give out some pans around the area to show where we're in. And more or less pointing in the direction of where we need to go. As well as enemies that may prove to be a bit of a nuisance in the area, such as these Bulbin archers that are just going to be firing at us for the remainder of this area. Now, if I recall correctly, I believe there's actually a chest somewhere down... Um, here. Ow. Oh, yep, there it is. I can see it. So how do we get to it? 
I think it's just... Yes, there seems to be a breakable fence right there, actually. Yes. Alright, I believe this is a stamp. Because I don't see what else it could be. Is that probably just a rupee? Yes, the Hylian letter H. Neat. Make finding chests a lot easier once we actually get the compass. Oh, there's a ladder right here. Huh, I didn't realize that. Alright, that door's locked. And there's a Beamos over there in another chest over here. Go ahead and open up this. This might be the small key. Yes. Alright. Uh, what is in this little alcove? Oh, there's just some pods. Alright. So yeah, we can't do anything with that Beamos blocking the way just yet. They keep dodging out of the way of all these Bulbins. God, they're a little annoying. Alright, in this room, is this another water room? I think it is. No, it's one of these rooms, right. Okay. Uh, you know what? I think we're going to call the episode here because we've been going on for a bit. I don't know how long it's been with that little speed up we did earlier. But I think it's best to probably call it for here and then continue on in the next episode. Actually, you know what? No, we're going to do one little thing real quick. We're going to show off this cool thing they do with the magnetism well, with it turning upside down and everything we gotta actually wait here come on there we go the next room is gonna have another uh, Goron Elder so we'll call the episode in there and it's probably best for us to do go ahead and open up this oh god it's this one <laughs> uh, this one's the weird one just uh Ah, ah, the young human. I am pleased to see you make it this far, brother. I am one of the four elders of the Goran tribe. I am called Gor Ebizo. You have heard of, our, of the plight of our patriarch, otherwise you would not have come to see me. Here, take this, brother. Yeah, he's just so gangly. <laughs> Now, there is one more shard, but seeing as you as reminded me of the dangerous l that line... The, yes, I'm old. <laughs> there is something that may help you. A weapon said to have been left in this mine by a hero of old. It is beyond price, and so we have protected it through generations. Now, when our tribe balances on the brink of ruin, it could aid in our salvation. The hero's weapon is stored safely up ahead. Talk to the guard and take it with you with the blessings of the Gorons. Guy, he's just a weirdo. <laughs> I don't like that one. And I forgot to put my phone on silent again. Cool. And a yellow rupee. Alright. So, yes. With that, we've gained two of the key shards. And now we have a little uh, hint as to where we can go next. So, next time on The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, we're going to be heading further into the mines. Hopefully acquiring this secret weapon that the Elder spoke of. And maybe doing some more things here and there in the dungeon. Maybe we'll get closer to finishing it. Who knows? See you guys next time.